This is Night Force Action Report for July 23rd, 2013. From HorribleNight.com, I am Justin Lacey. Joining me to report in this evening, we've got Ethan Moses. Hey, good evening. Hello. And also, hello to you, Aaron McNeil. I'm a detective. Hello. <laughs> what do you detect? <laughs> I detect a lot of Night Force. <laughs> I watch Night Force to learn about Night Force. <laughs> <laughs> this is the video game podcast from HorribleNight.com where we check in on the games we've been playing and offer up some game pitches. Uh, but first, let's get caught up on Ethan Moses, who's been who's melting away, trapped mm-hmm. in concrete right now. Uh, what else yeah. has been going on outside of your hot home? Well, um... I was finally saw Pacific Rim this weekend. Maybe not finally, because it hasn't been out that long. Wait, and, uh, wait you got false advertising in your notes, because Pacific well, fucking Rim. Well, I'm going to tell the... I'm going I'm to... Well, okay. Yes, Pacific fucking Rim, because it was Pacific fucking awesome. <laughs> uh, that was a great movie. Uh, word of caution to you, though. If you're one of those pieces of shit on Reddit that loves science so much and everything has to be accurate, don't fucking go see the goddamn movie. I don't want to hear your shit about science and how the movie's inaccurate and how it, it's not a movie about accuracy. It's a movie about fucking fun. I had so much fun. I was smiling ear to ear. I felt good. I raised the fucking roof, dude. I haven't done that for at least three weeks. I was that <laughs> excited about it. And as soon as I got online, I was like, you know what? I'm excited. I'm going to find other people that are excited like me. I got under Reddit, and I should have done that. I know I should have done that. Why do you – but... you, you hate Reddit so much, but you go there more than I do. I, li- I like it because there's people on there that I like, but the people – and I, I, need, I need to get past this because – there, there, there are more good people there than bad people. But the bad people get under my skin. Some guy went into this whole big spiel about how the weight, oh, the distribution of the weight would crumble everything. Ah, and I was like, oh, if I saw you, I'd punch you. I would bully you. I don't like bullying, but I would bully this guy. I definitely would. Um, that movie was awesome. Holy shit. Go see that movie. Don't, don't think of it as anything but a fucking robot punching fest because – Oh my god. Why is that not Actually, the name that, of it? I was going to say, that's a better, that's a better title. <laughs> it, it, it should be. That should be the name of it. But no, great movie. Uh, I was really excited about it. I don't want to spoil it for anybody. I'm excited. Um, yes, yes, yes. yes. More, more of that. I'm going to go see it again probably this Can, week sometime. We should actually just by myself. incorporate that into our review ratings. Just yes or no. It's just... Yeah. <laughs> just no, it'll be a lot yes. easier. Pacific fucking Rim, yes. Yes, yes absolutely. Yes, yes. Um, the other thing I did, which was uh, still in the in the realm of geek, but in a different sort of way, is I played the game A Touch of Evil, which is a board game not unlike Arkham Horror for anyone who plays board games. Uh, the whole point of the game is you pick a villain, you and your group of friends pick heroes to solve mysteries and eventually confront the villain. Uh, a lot of randomness, a lot of fun, um, set in like the Revolutionary War time, so that's a different time period, but... That I'm, that I'm used to, but still it was fun. Uh, but I, the best part of it is is all the heroes that you pick, you know, there's like this detective from the big city, he's all tough, a femme fatale, um, this, this army commander, and my character was, um, you know, a fucking drifter with like a, a hatchet in one hand and a, and a handgun in the other. And then my buddy Brownow, he picks his randomly, he picks his character. It's a fucking playwright. It's a just it's, just, it's a guy that it's not even good enough to be an actor or a director. He's a fucking playwright, and we we gave him shit the whole time because like you know like oh like this evil has come to our land and there's only one man that can help us. And this playwright walks up and is like I don't know if I, I don't know if I should be here. Should I, do you want me to go? Like, should I write? I'll write about this. Like I'm perfectly okay with writing about these events, but I'm not going to interact with it. And lo and behold. Lo and behold, and we were fighting a werewolf in this scenario. Final showdown happens, and all of us are stocking up on weapons and shit like that, just getting ready for this battle, like getting pumped. And I think it's gonna be me because I've got two. I've got a. I've got a musket, and I've got a blunderbuss, and I'm just fucking. I'm ripe. Like I am ripe. For the point. I'm, like, I'm gonna. I'm gonna insert my metaphorical, you know, foot into it. You know, a werewolf's penis, like right inside of it, and. <laughs> I'm ready to go. It's a tough shot. It's a skill shot. <laughs> it's, it's, that's, a, that's a great <laughs> skill shot. And so we're getting ready for the final confrontation, and then my buddy's like, oh, shit. I, he had this way to transfer all of his points from 
combat, which he had none of, to cunning, which he had, had a shit ton of because playwrights are cunning as hell. And so he could use his cunning to, to equate to his combat points. He walked in to the a fucking playwright, dude. You know what? A, everyone knows a playwright. <laughs> this is a, not even a movie, not even a screenwriter. A fucking playwright walked into the werewolf's lair, one shot kill, fucking 11 rolls of dice, ding, 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 takes that shit out. Like, just ends it. And just, he might as well, he dropped the mic. He dropped the mic. <laughs> we were all, like, stunned. I was like, you know, like, I was like, I'm, I'm a drifter named Heinrich with two guns, and I couldn't fucking do it. So, um, it was cool how it all turned out. Great game, but man, boy, was I pissed to get shown up by a playwright. Such a foppish fellow, so. <laughs> That's why board games are for everybody, Ethan. Yeah. <laughs> that was the best pitch I've ever heard. I want to play. I want to play. Uh, Aaron, what have you been up to? Ah, uh, so while not writing a lot of reviews <laughs> and <laughs> we'll stuff get to like that. that, we'll get to yeah, that. I decided what better way to be boring and lazy than to have a triple movie night, load up some Netflix, and just go hog wild with whatever I could find on there. So uh, Ryan Gleason, I think you guys remember, he was tweeting like uh, maybe on Friday about watching a movie called A Good Old Fashioned Orgy. <laughs> Uh huh. What was, I was yeah? I was, yeah. That sounds like good advice to take from Twitter. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, he must be watching that on Netflix. I'll give it a try. It's, it can't be as stupid as I imagine it will be. And yo, know, that movie's pretty dumb. And uh, <laughs> Jason Sudeikis, a couple other names, Nick Kroll. Okay. It's like a lot of people that is it might old? have shown up on it. Uh, it's like from 2011. It's not, it's not old. that old. <laughs> yeah, it feels like an old movie though. There, there's not much to say. I mean, they pretty much. Uh, Jason Sudeikis is the main character. He has his. He lives in his dad's like old kind of beach house, and he's like, "Hey, we're about to get kicked out by the realtor. Let's throw one last good party." And the best idea they come up with is the orgy, because <laughs> that makes sense. You know, get all your friends together, and he's like, "Hey, let's just do it. Let's just fucking do it." Is his dad involved? involved? No. His dad is... No, of course not. <laughs> oh, okay. I just heard dad's... Dad's... Dad's throwing an like, orgy. Hey, son. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to be a part of a party where, you know, our dicks are in the same room, visible to each other. Oh, that sounds great. Hey, dad, what do you... You got any plans tomorrow evening? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what is, a, how, about, how about a good old-fashioned orgy? A, a good old-fashioned orgy. This is what set off England's laws, They do laws, say man. the title of the movie, and I, I took a drink. So I, I like to do that <laughs> when the movie's title is said. So, so that that got me feeling like I should watch something else, and I've been yeah, cl- like, cleanse yourself. Yeah, okay. cleanse myself. So I've been tiptoeing around watching Cabin in the Woods. I'm not a big horror guy. I understand. And uh, I oh. finally watched that movie, and I was I was awake. I was alive. <laughs> Holy shit, Josh Whedon! <laughs> that movie was fantastic. Yes, Fuck yeah, it was. Oh man, I don't even know. It was the best thing I could have imagined. I'm still thinking about it to this day. I, I went into work yesterday, and I'm like. Is there a wiki about this movie? And I started reading stuff. Probably I'm supposed to be working nine in the morning, and I'm, and I'm like, oh god, look at there's this monster was in the movie. There was a clown, and he would have been summoned by this thing. That's about as much as I want to get into. But, sure. but I was like, holy, I got really into it. Well, do a supplemental if, podcast. You can just tell us everything you. Yeah, everything I was going to say. I will come on to that podcast because I bought the movie adaptation uh, kind of book, like the guide, not the, the, the novelization, but like, you know, that, that showed all the behind the scenes shit. Like, oh, I was, yeah, that movie got me. Uh, I've got Pacific Rims on the way too, but yeah, I just, you got you got to get the background info. But they put so much time and effort into the background of all these stories. And like, even yeah. with like, you know, Cabin in the Woods, there were so many <laughs> monsters they made. They made so many fucking monsters. There were so many monsters. Well, no, oh, because man. you know, I mean... The like the climax of that movie. That's the scene they wanted to make, and then they just mm-hmm. formed a movie around it to make an excuse yeah. to make that happen, which yeah. I fully support because that I was, was I, I was fantastic. drooling all over myself when it finally happened. <laughs> oh my god, dude, that was an awesome scene. That is one of the greatest scenes in any movie I've ever seen in my entire fucking life. I can't. <laughs> I, I, I had strong regrets that I didn't even go to the theater. I'm like, I don't like to be trapped in a room with sweaty, gross people I don't know. <laughs> Everyone being Jeez. afraid of something, but I would have loved to be in a crowd, a dark crowd, just everyone going insane what, in the what, final third what, of that movie. What if this crowd was at a beach house and you're... In- <laughs> <laughs> and and my, I invite my dad and... <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh. So that was the best movie I watched that night, but I did watch a third. <laughs> and that one was called Lockout. I don't know this one. Uh, Guy Pierce uh, goes into space, and there's like a space prison, and he's got to save the president's daughter. <laughs> yes! <laughs> that was my the second review. best movie. <laughs> Wait, what, what was this, the president's daughter doing in space? She went up there to make sure the prisoners weren't being mistreated. <laughs> and then they, they take over that space station and they're like, you gotta get the president's daughter out. From the producers <laughs> of Taken, and the girl who plays the president's daughter is the same daughter from Taken. <laughs> wow. She loves being Taken. She, she absolutely Yeah, does. she gets trapped and put in all sorts of crazy situations. <laughs> You can imagine her agent. She's like, "Yeah, we got another kidnapping movie." <laughs> yes, she's like, yes. I'm, I'm prepped. I'm in the zone. I can I'm play a trapped lady all night long. <laughs> that that movie could have been a little crazier, but I was riding the hype from Cabin really hard, so I was expecting some zaniness. And the beginning of the movie made it me believe it was going to be like that. But maybe once they got into space it wasn't as crazy as I wanted it to be. I wanted some I wanted some like space fights. Like they go out, put suits on and just prisoners fighting in space. But they're it's like they're just in, in a prison, so it wasn't all that exciting. Lockout two, space fight. Space yeah, fight. <laughs> I got a script I got a script for them, producers of Taken. <laughs> Take that fight to space for real. Get well it's really the only the... that's the only place that Taken three can go, right? <laughs> Taken three will be yeah. locked out and taken together. Yeah. Taken Liam three. Neeson. Taken three. The gray two space fight. <laughs> the gray. Two, the wolves are up there. Yep. Yep. <laughs> space wolves. Man, we always we always make these great pitches at the beginning of the show, and that's not even the point. Uh, <laughs> Sideline that for the end. <laughs> uh not much has been going on. Going. On. I can't compete with your trifecta there, Aaron. Um, I did watch the the. Um, debut episode of New- Newsroom. Do either of you guys watch that? I have no. not watched it. It looks good, but nope. Every now and then, it, it, the only thing about that show, I love that show, but every now and then, with Jeff Daniels as the main character, I, he just gives me these weird Dumb and Dumber moments that I I don't know if he's <laughs> throwing them in on purpose or if I'm just noticing noticing them. But um, uh, this, this season's starting off pretty well um, with, I like the fact that the so all the all the show the show takes place two years in the past so it's in the seasons in 2011 and they base a lot of it around actual news stories and it's kind of cool to, to kind of relive some of the um, the major news stories like this this one's like right before uh, the Occupy Wall Wall Street stuff starts up um, and last season just all the stories they were centered around were pretty true stories um, which kind of limits them to you you know you kind of know how this the season's going to go if you know what stories they're going to follow, but it sounds like this one they're actually following kind of a fictional story too. So I'm kind of curious to see where they how that affects the the storyline. Um, I mean, it, it seems realistic, but um, they have a little bit more creative freedom with it. Um, beyond that, I happened to catch a link last night about two in the morning after I was putting together some of our podcast stuff um, to. An insane clown posse infomercial, <laughs> because um, did you know that those guys are still around? <laughs> First of all, yes, <laughs> yeah, is the infomercial. Yeah. It is a is the infomercial reminding people that they exist. It is an infomercial <laughs> for the 14th annual carnival of whatever they're called. Um, but it was just like they produced it like as a news show, and it was just. The worst thing ever, and so I wanted to uh, make people aware Gasp. that that's out there. All right. It's terrible. I watched a documentary about Juggalos, and I don't know if the documentarian <laughs> was trying to shed light on Juggalos to make them appear as if they are just like you and me. That was kind of the theme I was getting. Uh, by the end of it, I just like I I I can't stand Juggalos. I just don't yeah. I don't understand what's happening. Uh, Fago's great. Um, I wouldn't spray it onto a stranger's breasts. No, um, that's a waste of Fago, um, and that seems rude to me. It just like those those ICB concerts. And I worked with someone who was really into ICB, and they seem pretty normal. But when you see these concerts, it's like anarchy, and I think that's kind of what ICP would would love to ha- have happen is is anarchy, and I that's frightening shit. That sh- I hope no one's a juggalo in the in the audience right now. I don't mean to insult you, but like fucking like dudes. What other like grow out of it? Get what out other, of the face. 
What, what if ICP had a good old fashioned orgy? Oh, oh. God. Oh. <laughs> Sleep on all. that. It'd be like a pig pen style stink cloud around. <laughs> Just a big cartoon dust cloud. It was they go everywhere. For I, I think I was into ICP for about eighteen months around my freshman year of high school. <laughs> Uh, just like, you know, out of morbid curiosity, but it's just, it was like a time warp watching this. Like, this was, this was your shtick 14 years ago, and they're still doing mm-hmm. it, and they put on this big, like, festival in random town in Illinois, and they, like, start promoting all the other musical acts that are basically, they must be on their label, and they all look like junior Insane Clown, Cl- Clown Bossy members, like, uh... Oh man, I don't even remember something like Twisted is still around. That was the only one that I recognized, but they also wear all the makeup and it was <laughs> it was a bizarre thing to come across at two in the morning. So um that's when I recommend watching it. But actually don't ever watch it. So um, yeah, I'll still... try to come up with better material next week. <laughs> Juggalos need to step up their game. I forgot they existed with all the bronies going around. <laughs> <laughs> uh let's move on to video games. Check out the new releases for the week. Um, a bunch of random stuff. A little bit, little bit louder than last week, mainly because the Smurfs Two comes out for everything. Oh, are you serious? Yeah. Huh? I, I can't believe <laughs> they even. They're, I can't believe they're actually. They actually made that movie. I didn't think that first one did all that well because it looked god awful. But well, they made a Smurfs movie, like live action. Live action, animated, yeah. Like, well, we got three Alvin and the Chipmunks, so anything's possible. That's true. It's the are, same. It's from the same vein. You're right. Are the Smurfs like humans, like just blue, or are they no, animated? And they're animated. <laughs> it's like what's Gargamel look like? A Gargamel is um. <laughs> oh man, what's his oh. name? Hank Azaria. Yeah, Hank Azaria yeah. is Gargamel. Neil Patrick <laughs> Harris is in it. Um, that's all I know about the Smurfs movies. But yeah, that tie-in game. I'm sure it's great. <laughs> um, Stealth Inc., also known as Stealth Bastard, uh, is out for PSN and PS Vita this week. Uh, it's definitely a Vita game for me. So, Vita Bros. Recommend that if you like platform two D platformer stealth games. We got a game curious video up. Uh, Ethan, I think the biggest release for you, uh, Shadow Run Returns. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Especially tell me about, about that. that. What they did too? Well, it's a it's a turn based strategy game, um, turn based RPG. Excuse me. Um, if you'll remember, <clears throat> Shadowfall was, um, I believe, a pen and paper RPG. Uh, they made it into a shitty first person shooter, like back in the Xbox. Uh, I remember that. Very beginning of Xbox 360 <laughs> era. I tried to like um, that game. Oh, like and I, I didn't really. I like the concept of it because it's just like suddenly people just turn into fantasy type creatures and kind of combines fantasy and uh, kind of cyberpunk <clears throat> excuse me man I think like a fly through down my throat <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah I just, more just uh, get it strategies out. Uh, games yeah uh, yeah I'm excited about that best <clears throat> best pitch they've had for that game <laughs> I felt like one of those people reviewing the games eating the chili peppers <laughs> how upset were you to discover that guy after your chili challenge, you know what I we've we've done. I think in the, like the last three years, we have come across either we've come across games that suddenly get covered like three months later, or we've done something stupid that somebody does later on. I'm just not handsome enough. That guy was more handsome than I was, and that's people like to see handsome people eat hot peppers and talk about games. So I hear about um, that a lot. Whatever. I almost want to be on YouTube, and be like, oh, that's a really good idea. I tried that once, but I'm like, I'm not one of those fucking guys. I won't do that. Uh, <laughs> don't be a redditor. I'm not. Yeah, I was gonna say. I can't, that, that's yeah. That's a that's a redditor thing. That's the bad side of my redditor. The distribution of the peppers mm. when you're reviewing. How many Scoville units from the box? Not enough. I could eat a million. <laughs> uh, let's see. Hot, another Hot Shots Golf World Invitational for. I think that's the Vita game being released for PlayStation 3, which actually, looking it up, had had some decent reviews. Um, game called Do Not Fall. I think that's a funny title. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do it. It's and bad. The Raven Legacy of a Master Thief, 25 bucks on PC. I don't know anything about that, but $25 is a, yeah. a little serious. I think it's a, 
point and click adventure game. It kind of looked cool. Oh, I like the right. trailer. So yeah, I might take it take a gander. But twenty five bucks. We'll see. Let's we'll see. It's an investment. Uh, Kid Icarus is the Wii U Virtual Console release, um, and looks like an old Picross game is out for the eShop for uh, the 3DS. Did you play any of the Picross stuff there, Aaron? I played uh, the 3D one. Okay, yeah, that one's a good game. Yeah, it's solid. It's solid. What's Picross? Uh, I don't even know how to describe it. I don't know if 3D is like the rest of them, but it's pretty much. Like you're, you destroy blocks and they've got numbers on them, and you need to destroy all the right blocks to make the object. It's like a that's si- hidden. It's kind of like, like a Sudoku? Sudoku Minesweeper, but you you're yeah. make, you're making like pixelated graphics with it, or like <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, uh-huh. too much math. Ooh. but I'll play it. Cool. Someone buy me a 3ds. I'd probably, I'll probably have an extra one. They just announced that they're releasing a black 3DS XL, so I need to get rid of my red one, and you can have that one. Cool. Because I need to buy All right. One. So. It's justified. Yep. I think it, I think it makes sense. Uh, on to what have you been playing. Aaron McNeil, kick us off. Tell us some stories. We're talking about the 3DS. I bought a game on the eShop for... During the Steam sale, that's that's a, a risky move to buy a new game <laughs> Elsewhere. while Steam's giving you a bunch of good sale prices, but I bought Shin Megami Tensei 4, having never played a Shin Megami Tensei 1 through 3 game, and it's very accessible, though. You're pretty much uh, a guy who's chosen to be a samurai, and you get the power to fight and tame demons to fight alongside you. I don't know what the point of anything is yet. I've pretty much been inducted, and I keep running into a dungeon and then healing and then going back into the dungeon over and over again. There, that wait, sounds there's, awesome. There's a dungeon in this this RPG? I don't believe it. Yeah, there's a dungeon in the RPG. So can you train or, like, can you... Um, I'm grinding. Can you... Can you... Can you, can you grind? In the, <laughs> <laughs> can you train can, any demon? Like... As far as I can tell, yeah, and that's the, one of the best parts. It's it's kind of Pokemon esque, whereas okay. Pokemon you whittle the health down and throw a ball, but in this case you negotiate the demon to join your side. You persuade them. <laughs> what do you What do you have to offer? And it's so hilarious. Like you'll you'll be like, Aaron wants this demon to be his ally, and the demon's like, Do you oh. fear death? And I get like a choice of saying I I'm afraid or I'm not scared. And uh, you never know what no that fear. demon wants you to say. So sometimes I'm like, I'm not afraid of death, and the demon just get, no. just loses his mind. And he's like, well, <laughs> I'm going to kill you then. <laughs> and then the negotiation's off, and we're back to fighting. Whoa. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait, a, let's, let's start things over again, guy. I want you on my team. And he's like, give me some money. So I give him some money. Wait. And, I, <laughs> and he's like, give me some items. And so I hand over some items. I'll make then... you macaroni and cheese on Thursdays. <laughs> Final offer. Yeah. And then uh, he takes my stuff and runs. And so I, I curse a lot playing that game because I'm like, come on, you know, be be on my side, the cool team, man. You know, we've got we've got uniforms and we're gonna fight other demons and they steal oh. my shit and run. I don't think the Winchester brothers would like this game at all. Oh man, <laughs> that would piss them off. They've made some demon negotiations. They weren't happy about it, but uh, man, that would be. I mean, these are just grubbing ass demons. They they're not yeah. gonna, they're not, they're not <laughs> your friend, dude. Look, Aaron, can, just, can I be real with you real quick? Set me so straight. These demons aren't ever going to be your friend. They'll only hang out with you if you negotiate with them. Find a Pokemon. Go find a Pokemon because Pokemon will be your friends for life, like in a stupid, ridiculous way. They will let you abuse them forever and ever. Yeah. Demons, I don't know. I don't like I don't like the road you're going down. I'm nervous for you. I, I game sounds awesome, awesome though. The game, the game is, yeah, the game is pretty good. I'm glad I bought it, but uh, PF and chat pretty much... The main reason why I got it, I oh, already owned yeah. Fire Emblem, so I bought Tensei 4, and I got $30 of eShop credit. I'm sitting mm. on it, so Sweet. maybe if uh, so maybe you... if Pokemon drops on the eShop, I can just get that. Don't so you... tell those demons about your eShop credit, because they're going to want it. They're going to say, well, <laughs> they start giving your eShop credit. <laughs> I was watching the podcast last night, so... Uh... <laughs> I want Pushmo and Crashmo. <laughs> I've got them already. <laughs> I can't buy them again. So wait, you bought a game that you probably wouldn't have bought anyway so you can get a free game? 
pretty much. I was okay. that's Steam. That's Steam state of mind. You just yeah. make, <laughs> you make decisions that make no sense. Yeah, like buying Kane and Lynch too. <laughs> the, well, that's the best thing you've done. Oh man. It was $4. It was $4. Yeah, you, I was didn't, say, yeah. you didn't get $30 of credit for buying that thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a lot of trading cards. You think you'll stick stick with it? I mean, it's uh, RPGs are they take a lot of time, and you've got other games that you're playing. Well, I've got Animal Crossing, and right. I, I don't play that forever, but the 3DS is already in my hand whenever I need to just take a break from my maybe, uh, village. Maybe I just switch on buy, over. Maybe you should buy the Black DS XL 2, and then you yes. can just you can have bo- you keep both of them. You have one oh that's always playing Animal Crossing, <laughs> and then you have another one that you can play during the loading screens, or while the fucking owl <laughs> won't shut the fuck up and just take oh. my damn fossils. Uh, Ethan's geez, so uncomfortable that, that right owl. now. <laughs> He's so uncomfortable. I just hate the fuck out of owls. Every time someone gets abducted by aliens, they always they always register an owl was was with them. That's a true fact. Look it up. I didn't know that happened. Is there I think a... owls are abducting people. How Is that do you on the feel? History Channel? It's on, it's on the History Channel. That guy that looks like this, like the, the, the aliens guy. Every time yeah, they get yeah, abducted, yeah. there's yeah. an owl, and it knows everything. Around. The owl never tells us what he saw. How do you feel about the new the uh, Hooters logo? They redid the owl. They did? What? Yeah, look that, that shit up. Now? Who's ever paid attention to the Hooters logo? <laughs> I didn't know they had a logo. Do they have a logo? <laughs> it's an owl. Hmm. Oh. Wow. Because that of the makes hoops. sense. I guess it makes sense. I mean, they sell buffalo wings, so why wouldn't they have an owl? Uh, boobs. <laughs> boobs. Uh, <laughs> I gotcha. What? Okay, what Hooters. else? What else are you playing here? Uh... I've been playing some Torchlight 2. I'm getting back into Torchlight 2. Loots, clicking. I like it. It's fun. I don't. I fell off of it, and I think maybe it was just the character I was playing. I got. I got too deep. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I want something fresh. I made a mage, mm-hmm. and so now, blue blue balls flying everywhere. <laughs> and so <laughs> that apparently gets me excited about games again. That's a, yeah, that does. A, you know, but I did the same thing. Like I had a character go, and I got to a point where I was like, I'm not having as much fun with this character, and I switched over. And I, I mean, that was that like three week period where I just played. I think I added like 50 hours onto my Torchlight too, just in that time alone with a new character and did yeah. a new game plus and all that kind of stuff. You know, maybe maybe our characters could meet for maybe like a play date. Could we said like a like a play date? <laughs> a a blue ball on? play date. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love it. I'd love it. I, I bet that's great. a mode in that Disney Destiny game actually. <laughs> <laughs> play date mode. Oh, uh, that's blue ball mode. So, yeah, like <laughs> why did you pick up Torchlight again? Like, okay, uh, you're getting loot lust. Yes. There's a lot of options out there. Why Torchlight? Uh, I picked up because uh, Nilmar in chat, okay. I, you know, the Steam sale going on, people were picking up games that they didn't already have, and so when someone's like, hey, I have this game, all of a sudden, it just revitalizes me to want to play games I already own myself. So I'm like, hey, we can play this together, I haven't been playing yeah. it for a while. I'm blaming you, Nilmar. <laughs> <laughs> Strap in. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, I want a good excuse. I want a reason to actually play that game start to finish, and I just haven't done that yet. And so, if someone's there to experience it with me, yeah, maybe I will. It got I mean, I, there's so many dungeon crawlers and so many loot games in the past two years. Like, I, if you are going to play them, there's no reason to solo them anymore. I would, yeah. Uh, after my recent Borderlands run of with four people, I totally. <clears throat> yeah, I'll pl- I'll play with a crowd, but oh, I, I can't know. see myself looting solo anytime soon. <laughs> That's my album title, Looting Solo. <laughs> <laughs> and the last game, uh, I picked it up during the Steam sale just to promote one game I actually bought during that sale. That's not Kane and Lynch too. Uh, Reus, is that how you say it, Ethan? You played this? I I think it's Reus. I Reus? I don't know. Yeah, Reus. I played that really game. Just draw that out. Yeah, I played that game for an evening. The tutorial is god awful slow, and I I don't know. I was like half watching TV. I don't even know what I was watching on TV. I just need to look somewhere else. That, that tutorial is killer. But I played through the whole thing, and when I finally got into a real game, it picks up. Hmm. I was I was juggling giants, like no tomorrow, and I was <laughs> really invested. <laughs> I was juggling giants like no tomorrow, Reus. 
Uh, but that's a, <laughs> it's a fun game. It's like a strategy puzzle game, the way they've got that set up. And the little missions pop up to um, complete buildings in your villages that kind of spring up as you make land in, uh, habitable. Like and, Ethan, uh, Ethan, I think you were saying it was kind of like a peaceful game for you. Like it was kind of relaxing. Oh, very, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, and I can get stressful, and I think that's one of the, my biggest objections to the game is I felt like I'd get in a mode where I was just kind of hanging out. But, I mean, there's some micromanagement going along with it. But, yeah, it's it's really pleasant game. Uh, graphics are great. Music's great. It just, you know, it's kind of one of those games that can kind of suck you in, and you can turn off reality because reality's harsh, man. That's what I did. I just turned off reality, and I was... <laughs> jumping between villages, and one village is like, hey, destroy this other village to make us happy, and I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> I'll sacrifice this one, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> and I got all my trading cards, so that's oh, a good shit. evening. Whoa, whoa, you got all the trading cards for, for Reyes? Uh, well, not not all of them to make the badges, but all the drops, I should s- specify that. Okay, all right. Yeah, I don't want to sell myself higher than I actually am. I still need cards. I almost cracked and bought some just for that game. No. They're like, I don't know how much they were, like 14 cents or something yep. to buy a card. That's like the weirdest, you know, hesitation hand hovering over the mouse decision I've ever... Hey, man, <laughs> supply and demand. That's... Uh, yeah, <laughs> the... I, I don't... Uh, I don't know if I get the cards, but I'm in. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, I don't <laughs> yep. get it, but I'm in. Like, it's just something to do, you know? Like, I like it. I've made 87 cents. I'm loving it. I'm making some, I some made big a dough. I made a nice, dude. I fucking bought the level 4 badge for the Steam sale. Because I, um... At the end of the level 3 badge, which I... I mean, got all this legit, legitimately. I've not put any real Justin dollars into the marketplace yet. I've just been trading okay. existing cards for 16 cents a pop or whatever they ended up being. Um, and then I got one of those foil cards and and sold that for two bucks. And, oh, what? And then so, yeah, for 16 cents a pop, I bought all 10 of the of the set to get my level 5 badge for the Steam sale. That's how I, how I ended it. I like to imagine some teenager just giving you $2 for this fake <laughs> foil card. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> That's the weird thing about it. That's why I know I won't spend real money because at the end of the day, like, those things don't exist. Like, they're not real. Like, there's not really actually cards there. None of our uh, stuff in games exist if if you want to get to... Uh... It doesn't... Doesn't that make you so sad? Like, the amount of time we spend to create imaginary... <laughs> like, like talk about Torchlight too. Like, dude, I've got so much loot. I'm so happy about it. But I'm like, I just wish I could transfer it over to something. To a real ho- real money auction house. If only there was some way to... Yeah, if only someone... That in a way. Yeah, if someone made a real money auction house, more games need that. I think so. Someone needs to step up and be the first. I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> maybe remodel an existing franchise, you know? Yeah, maybe. Completely. Torchlight 2 could add one. Torchlight 2, yeah, it's it's, well, it's going to in Torchlight 3. I mean, if you look at the succession of Diablo versus Torchlight, they kind of move in the similar directions. Animal Crossing uh, auction house. I yeah. thought about it. <laughs> Is there really one? There should no, be. but yeah, I Justin and I, and I could just sell fruits. They'd add more fruits. Yeah, fuck turnips, just like, I'll go buy my apples, man. Do you think the apocalypse is going to happen when people stop selling actual fruit and begin just selling Animal Crossing <laughs> fruit? I don't and know. And everyone's like, where'd all the fruit go? That The markets are completely I, barren. It's like, I'm of the mind that guys. Animal Crossing is making making a lot, is making some really great people. Like, I, f- I feel like it's teaching me a lot about doing chores that uh, has translated. No, it's translated to my real life now. Like, just are you digging those... up fossils in your yard? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and just yelling at raccoons. That's pretty much how my day goes. <laughs> well, most people do that. <laughs> um, are you actually interested in the trading cards after the sale? Either of you? Are you gonna? I'm um, kind of. I'll probably fall off of it. You know, the st- the summer sale does things. It pumps chemicals into your brain that don't normally exist and <laughs> you just start doing weird stuff so yeah give it a, like a week once that sale fever is completely gone i'll probably not i'll forget i'm even getting cards when i play games yeah it's a, it's a good reason to jump back into games i mean I, i've been really struggling to settle on a game and, and those cards are really good reason to but it's, why? it's a really good kind of breaking point but i don't give know me, why but it... give me a filter in my library so i can just See the games that offer cards. 
because <laughs> there is isn't there one in the card section? You can go through the card section and uh, hit. I mean, yeah, it's I a different. It's not in your library. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's that one. Route, but, but that's um, not in the same order. But that would work because yeah. give me that and then give let me sort by the date that I purchased purchased the game because I was like three days into the Steam sale. I couldn't remember what I bought. Yeah. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> These are these yeah. are the problems I have that they need yeah. to fix, or yeah. I won't, or I won't sell any more emoticons. God damn it! Occupy <laughs> Wall Street. I've sold. I've made four cents off of emoticons so far. So wow, that's yeah. pretty good. <laughs> um, Aaron, tell me about your Skyrim adventures so I can tell people about my Skyrim adventures. So you playing Skyrim made me want to play Skyrim. Yes, and I made a. Uh, a cat man, a cat dude, I was calling Khajiit. him. I believe. The Khajiit is the proper terminology in Webster's Dictionary. <laughs> and I don't think so. I don't think so, that's accurate. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's in there. <laughs> no, it's in there. It's just under furry. It's, it's under furry. furry. <laughs> so I've got my cat man running around, and he's. I'm just trying to be a real jerk and stab people. And Even Ethan has inspired me to play it, because I think all you guys are just using bows and arrows all the time. Aaron the Khajurk. The yeah. <laughs> and I really want to level up archery and just be sneaky as hell. And I'm like gaming the system because I remember that if you kind of like walk into a wall while someone is nearby but can't see you, your sneak skill just keeps leveling up and up. Mm. And I'm like, I'm almost to the next level, trying to just sneak into this wall. <laughs> so wall can't see me. So no one can see me. And so uh, I got my own Lydia. I, I treat her like shit too i'm like get Jeez. out of here Jesus she, <laughs> she got stuck on a rock because I, I told her to wait there accidentally and i'm like where is she and uh so i'm pretty much just playing all the same quest i've already played like a thousand times before but now i'm a cat dude and that makes it interesting again but you but when you're playing in first person it doesn't fucking matter <laughs> oh you I, know. I, I put it in third person sometimes because okay. i gotta see that have tail. you have you noticed um like any of the any of the people treating you differently because I think that's a that's a thing right in this game. I ha- I haven't noticed anyone actually oh. refer to me as being a uh, well I a guess kajirk. in story in story parts uh, someone I think referred to me as being a kajerk yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> who is who who's everybody? It's like the the Nords don't like the dark elves. I know that's yeah. like the big, I know the, like the, I know the dark <laughs> oh, elves yeah. were not liked. Yeah. There's a graph somewhere of all the the racism in Skyrim. <laughs> sure, there's yeah, that's sure there's Venn diagrams of it. And, uh, <laughs> well, the Nords don't like the elves who don't like the cat dudes who don't like the orcs. <laughs> does, does anybody like the orcs though? I feel bad I, for them. I almost made an orc and I was like, I don't like <laughs> these orcs, no. so I made a cat dude instead. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. I'm 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 racist myself, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> there are all kinds of things. Um... <laughs> I put another good chunk of time into Skyrim this weekend. I don't. I um. I've actually been having fun just ever since Ethan was talking about how I should just get rid of the companions because they're annoying, and I agree. I have now. I'm gonna stick with Lydia. We're just gonna. We're just. We're gonna just hate our way through this together. <laughs> That's um, love, man. Because I'm you. pretty sure she can't stand me either um it is lending itself to i'm working on a montage a tribute montage to lydia since i uh accidentally killed her the other day <laughs> and we were for reals <laughs> yeah it wasn't on purpose like I-, I will not i won't hurt her on purpose other than with my words so yeah. <laughs> um but like she had gotten lost because i was just hiking down a mountain jumping on rocks you shouldn't jump on and stumbled into some location full of bandits and like I rounded a corner was trying to shoot down these dudes and I just saw this figure like looked like they jumped off the roof and landed next to me and I thought like I thought the bandits were coming in from above but and then um so I shot them as soon as they landed only to discover that it was Lydia and she had right in the face too like she was trying to she was trying to save the day and so (laughs) She like <laughs> fell oh, off. Of, <laughs> yeah, and, and then she falls, and then you know she does her. She she takes a knee, and that's like you, that's the only time she's really vulnerable for you to kill her. And I nailed her with an arrow, and only to discover that um, 
I killed her. So so then I took all my stuff back and then <laughs> no, the end up actually reloading reloading to the point where I could bring her back because uh, we have to see those through together. But um, yeah. I kind of had yeah, a question. Love... Good. I love Lydia, and uh, the fact that we pointed out she has resting bitch face. Yep, she does. Yeah. <laughs> if you haven't seen just, that YouTube video, she's just angry all the time. She, yeah, she's constantly in hate with Justin. <laughs> I have to, whatever, you, what, what's her, her phrase when you ask her to do stuff? But she always says it very begrudgingly. Oh, uh, she's um, like, I'm sworn to yep. carry your burdens. Yep. <laughs> um, And then... What else happened? A there's one more. Like she she got lost at one point. She was traveling like she was like scaling the mountain and just kind of we lost track of her for a couple a couple hours. And oh, I know what I was gonna do. I was gonna ask you, Ethan, because I you know I only put like 20, 30 hours into my my vanilla run of Skyrim back on the three sixty, and I've since I've loaded it back up on PC. I have all the DLC, but I don't know what deal what content is a part of which dlc or if it is so the first um kind of like the first dragon i came across like out in the wild i ended up killing him and then i think it was a dragon priest that just like spawned immediately after i killed him and he almost tore me up but i eventually killed him and got his mask Mm -hmm. are those dragon priests a part of the dragonborn dlc or um, there, there is one drag. No, no, no. Those are those are with the the, the base game. Okay. Yeah, I've uh, seen those guys before. I never yeah, seen yeah, one, yeah. and I killed like yeah. twelve dragons. So um, there, there's one dragon priest who is over the original Dovakin, who's the uh, who's in that DLC. But okay. no, no, no. Those, yeah. They're, they're, I mean, it's it's tough for me to even know yeah. what is different and what's not. Uh, all I know is that like. The vampires are starting to attack yeah, everybody... like, all the fucking time. That's yeah. the, the dawn guards up on your shit. Yeah, they are. Vampires are just mentioned all the time, and I just have been ignoring them so far. But um, yeah, but yeah, I think that was near one of those. I, I want to call it a dragon roost, but like that's the thing when you're wandering around. There's just so many different i different types of icons and different landmarks. I can't tell tell apart what these yeah. are supposed to be, and so that was just like that was that dragon head play like where you can get one of the uh uh the the words you can the, shout the words so, yeah and um mm-hmm. uh, so yeah i was just confused if that was part of the dlc or not but that was that was a cool fight and if it wasn't for lydia i wouldn't have survived so that's kind of yeah. i think that's where she kind of <laughs> cemented her position with me if i'm gonna like live and die by my bow which is what i'm doing right now i need i need her to uh tank for me so um, yeah well yeah. but i will shoot her from time to time just not on purpose so Yep. She's at least she, at least she's loyal though too. That's the other thing I'll give her. Like she's real loyal. She'll teabag a person you kill. <laughs> <laughs> um what else have I been up to? This week's um arcade challenge game is Sunset Riders. Either of you played that game? I feel like I've heard of it, but I don't recall so, what it racing is. Racing game? No. No. It's more of like nope, a I it's more of like a uh, Contra style shooter, uh, but on the old West, and it's like a Contra style shooter meets like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles arcade game. Okay, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. really I colorful, got a lot of personality. Um, we since we just gotten done playing Galaxian and Berserk, which are just like really bare bones technically technical games. Uh, we needed something with some personality. So um, this I've never I never played this game and. It's got it's got a really great sense of humor. It's I mean you step on rakes and they hit you in the balls and your guy kind of <laughs> bounces back. But um, it's got some racism in it. It's got some uh, sexism in it because you you know wander around old old west towns. It's you know it's just side scrolling. You've got guns and you're looking for power ups for your guns while outlaws are shooting at you and you can you can duck into the bar and you know cuddle up with a prostitute and get some gold for doing that and get get wow. drunk get some oh. gold for doing that um it's and then it's, um it's not high definition racism or sexism right no so no it's okay no. yeah i think so i think I, that's I, what somebody on tv said i don't know i don't know it remember. was acceptable in the 90s so it's still acceptable today yeah. i think <laughs> um and uh there's there's boss fights at the end of each each level with just like the most generic um you know wild west outlaws and um 
it's 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 pretty fun so far. It's uh, it it keeps breaking up the action with like random scenes of, you know, you'll be running along and a, you'll see some some chickens will pop up from one side of the screen and all of a sudden you're in the middle of a stampede and you have to jump on top of the jump on top of the bulls and run on top of the bulls to avoid being damaged and uh, it's just a it's just a lot of fun. So hmm. I thought you were saying it was a stampede of chickens. Yeah, I did too. I was like, that would be <laughs> awesome. Fuck. But don't kill the chickens. And then you ever. kill the chickens. Again, in anything. Yeah. Do not kill the no. chickens. Uh, let's see. I played a little bit of Mortal Kombat last week. Uh, that was my second biggest uh, streaming mistake so far. Uh, I think <laughs> next to playing a Mega Man game for the first time live. <laughs> don't ever. Playing a fighting game when you suck at fighting games live is. Uh, uh, it's. It's. It's difficult. It's hilarious. Um, but I think chat was at least entertained. We had some new folks drop by, and they seemed to get a kick out of the fact how much I was, how terrible I was at that game. But yeah, the story mode still still holds up. I forgot though that the story mode doesn't let you do fatalities, and I think uh, that's going to be one of the factors that keeps me from pushing through the story mode, just because I've already seen the story mode, and I just was kind of trying to revisit this game on PC. Um, the game looks great. Um, at least when you're fighting, but they yeah. did not bother to up res or re-render the cutscenes, so they're just mm. like they're you know 720p or maybe even less than that uh, pre-rendered cutscenes that are just pixelated to hell when you're playing at a higher resolution. So the smooth transition that I loved on the console from the cutscenes to the action, uh, not quite there on the PC. <laughs> you can definitely definitely see the shift. So. Uh, I have not tried out the multiplayer. I'll be curious to see if people are actually playing that on the. <laughs> if there's a PC community around that, um, you should stream that if you play. Oh, I will. <laughs> I I see how fast you get destroyed. I will. I don't have. A, I mean, I don't have a problem making a fool of myself. I just more. Or less, I more worry about people <laughs> being able to be entertained by me losing all of the time. So, uh, but <laughs> I, I figured. We would have lost some of our fans by now if that didn't entertain them with us with how much I struggle with video games in in general. Who's your, who's uh, your fighter in Mortal Kombat? I I well, Liu Kang's historically been my go to guy, um, and then Scorpion's probably my second best. The I actually started really enjoying Johnny Cage in this version, um, I, just because his character. That's what I was thinking. His character's so over the top, and then. Um, because he, he, I mean, I hate Johnny Cage in general, but they just, like, they embraced, he just was all out, like, Johnny Cage set to 11, you know, uh, for this game. And there was something endearing about that, that, you know, he's got fucking, he's got his fucking name tattooed across his chest. Like, it's, <laughs> it's ridiculous. So he never forgets. And I, and I like his, I like his shadow kick and um, the fact that at the end of every fight, he'll have broken sunglasses and he'll reach in his pocket and put on a fresh pair of sunglasses. <laughs> so um, always prepared also this the complete edition on the pc comes with all the dlc characters so randomly running into Fred, freddy krueger is kind of kind of weird because he was the last character they added as dlc oh freddy krueger the yeah the, the freddy, freddy krueger, the krueger? <laughs> huh yeah. that's interesting um i also played some i finally finished the main storyline of dlc quest I had played that before on Xbox Live Indie Games and just kind of loved it for its concept that, you know, the first thing you have to do in the game is find enough coins to buy the ability to run left because you can only run <laughs> light, run, run right, and you can't jump. Um, and then the second thing you want to buy is animation so your character doesn't just slide yeah. across the screen. Um, and it just it builds and builds from there, and the writing's really clever. And it's really short. It's really short. Um, I had no idea. It's basically only two stages. So um, if you haven't seen that through or just given a taste of it, it's it's funny enough to finish. And then they, um, I believe they released some um, they released some actual DLC for it that is free, and they call it their their freemium edition. So I'm sure there's some free to play <laughs> joke free to play jokes in that uh, that section of the game. Um, lastly, we played, uh, Borderlands 2, um, some four player last night. And I also played a good chunk of it this weekend, um, because I've been looking to build up the psycho character just because, uh, it's cool. Oh, yeah, nice. he's, he's cool. And 
So I've been playing him solo, but this made me replay the opening ten levels of character progression again for like at least the sixth time for me and it's 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 wearing a little thin yeah that's not the best part so um i wrote about this a little bit but the way that i've entertained myself is i'm actually using a walkthrough guide to make sure that i am getting everything i can in each of these opening levels just because i've done them so many times so i found like you know i found all the um, the vault symbols and all the telescopes and like that kind of thing. But I was going to corners that I hadn't been to before. And that was, um, that was at least distracting enough for me to push through because man, up, up through that captain Flint fight, I just, I just, I want someone else to play yeah. it for me, but I've got yeah. that memorized. <laughs> yeah. That's a tough, that was, yeah. Cause that, that's a really, cause with playing Diablo 3 and Torchlight 2 and some of those games, like I play multiple characters and it's easy to get through those sections in the very beginning because again, they're so fast but Borderlands 2, I just I have yet to have any sort of motivation to go back and try it with somebody else. I just, I, it's just tough man, that's a really bad, and, and they've and they've, and they've they recognize that was an issue actually in, in the new game plus plus, um, <laughs> yeah. you avoid that section, <laughs> which oh, is really? good because that sucked on New Game Plus to actually go through that section again. That wasn't fun, so... Do they basically... What, do they start you, like, at Sanctuary or something? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, Like, right after... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because that's where the game starts to to open up and you have options. It's just, like, it's so linear right there, and you can't... You don't have vehicles. You can't... It's just a ton of backtracking, but... I really dig the the Psycho character um, because his, you know, his primary ability... Is just to go crazy and try to axe kill everything, and when you kill when you kill anything, you automatically have full health, and oh, wow. it's it's pretty powerful. Like you'll ju- you're just about to die, you you trigger that for one last one last attempt, and I was killing badasses in like three swings, and um, it was he was really starting to grow on me. Um, so I thought I would switch over to him when we played multiplayer. He's still a little bit behind where. Um, where our group where our group is at, so I, I continued to play with the gun zerker and actually started having fun with him again because I finally read up on what his actual gun zerking skill does. Uh, the fact that it also gives you health whenever you kill things, so I was using it more. But um, uh, Cole and I were playing with uh, Nomar jumped in for a little bit, um, and he was ten level. He was level one. We were level ten, <laughs> and we got him leveled up to like level six in about thirty minutes. So that was kind of funny to witness, um, just how fast he was able to jump in and. Um, kind of keep pace, and then um, we continued on with the four four player group. Aaron was in there, and then Cole's yep. cousin Andy, um, who actually works with uh, Jason on the Evolution of Gaming uh, podcasts uh, on their YouTube channel. And we, I I don't think I'd ever played that. Well, I'd never been in that many firefights with just four people. We were kind of building up to that point, but we got into some really. We did the Firehawk mission, and things got really crazy. And just the amount of badasses, and um, we had a lot of loot goons. Loot dropping. midgets, yeah. Loot. loot midgets galore. And it just gets really chaotic and really, really fun. It's just it's a completely different um, pace when you're playing with that many people. And for someone that put 100-plus hours into Borderlands 1 single player, like I, I haven't really gotten heavy into the four-player, and, and it's just... It, completely it was like a new game to me hmm. and yeah i can agree with that it's awesome and plus i got um some orange grenades that spawn like 16 child grenades and everything blows up whenever i want it to and um that entertains me um uh, a lot <laughs> are, you, are you guys playing on pc or 360 we're playing pc so this is one I of those PC. one of those starting over because on the new platform so cool we're, we're about a level twelve now, I think. So we'll yeah, keep, that's about right. We'll keep pushing wow. through. We'll probably play that once a week or once every other week with um, some of our group. I'm, I'm like I'm less worried about having like a core group of four people always on the same mission. That's kind of how we started it. I think we'll keep it a little looser and just let people jump in and out and keep it fun that way. So mm. sounds good. Yeah. Ethan, what have you been playing, buddy? Um, well, speaking of not being very good at games, uh, you were talking about Mortal Kombat. I was actually thinking about streaming Awesome Knots the other day, uh, yeah. as an introductory section or session, and uh, I'm not very good at that game at all. That's a tough fucking game, <laughs> and that little stealth lizard's a little bitch. <laughs> um, 
I you know because I you know I started off with the cowboy fish. and I like the cowboy. I, I like yeah, cowboy's him. solid, man. He's he's really solid. It's really good introductory uh, character. Uh, I, I just was really learning the ropes when I played this past weekend. It, 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 that's a lot of fun. Like I really didn't know what to expect from it. Um, but again, I think Justin, you've said it's a very good introduction to the idea, the concept, uh, the mechanics, if you will, of a MOBA. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, without the, uh, you know, I lost a lot. I probably, I, I got killed by, you know, the, the opponents, which isn't good in a MOBA, uh, which I found out really quickly. <laughs> no. um, People like, can you quick. <laughs> yeah, and they gives them all kinds of gold coins and stuff. And no one got super mad at me or anything, but um, I, I know that, you know, my deaths weren't as detrimental as maybe they would be in like a Dota 2 or a League of Legends or something along those lines. But, um, but, but you know, just graphically that game just looks really, really awesome. I forgot it looked that good. Uh, I forgot about the fucking intro. Shit, screen, yeah. <laughs> uh, which is amazing. Um, <laughs> more games need to have that, even even games that are more seriously toned. Like, I think A Last of Us would benefit from, like, a standard <laughs> yeah. card introduction. It needs, uh, like, a blooper reel or something. Yeah. <laughs> Just cut down on that, but... I'm looking forward to playing Awesome Outs with you guys because I, I mean, playing with people you don't know, like you have to play the game with people. Um, playing games with people you don't know isn't quite as much fun, and I think we'd have a good time with it. Um, and I'm, I'm, that I'll go back to that. That's a, that's a pretty good game to pick up and just play for a little bit. So uh, yeah, thumbs up. I don't know what took me so long. I, I found out I had it because I, I bought a, a humble indie bundle. <laughs> Oh and yeah, and I was going through my email and I was like, oh shit, I forgot about that. So I loaded I, all those uh... up. I was like, yeah. I kind of have that problem, especially around Steam sale time, of forgetting what's sitting over in my humble account because yeah. I never actually took the time to port it over. But I've yeah. got a lot of duplicates there. Um, yeah. Yeah. The, I will say, Awesome Knots is a little bit slow going at first because it takes so long to to unlock all the characters. Now, granted, mm -hmm. I believe you can buy DLC to just unlock everything, but um, you know that's another five bucks or whatever it is. But yeah. and there's just there are so many characters, so it's just always kind of taunting you when you start with those three back when the game launched and there were only like six characters that wasn't as big a deal but yeah. some of those later characters are are pretty awesome um, there's a ton holy yeah. shit but uh, that that game, the game's just really it's really fun um it just has the right amount of complexity i don't know and it's mm -hmm. just it's so accessible and also really good looking and i can't believe i I can't believe they're still supporting it in the way that they are. It kind of reminds me of Dungeon Defenders in that regard that they just keep doing more and more stuff for it. Um, yeah. And, and so I hope it I hope it builds into something else. Maybe get an Awesome Knots too. Um, but it's yeah, I'd recommend it for just a, a casual game with a, a group of friends. We we had a blast uh, when we had you know you just get six people together and play three on three. Like I don't know. It was a, it was the first time I've kind of made that connection to my sports days growing up like playing three on three basketball and actually doing that with a video game and like kind of feeling like you're just getting getting the getting the crew together and we're gonna play some play some three on three but it's awesome nuts yeah. and it's better because it looks like a saturday morning cartoon and yep. there's sounds a dick, like one there's a yep. dick fish and so. a dick fish yep sounds like it um the uh, other uh, kind of stick with the side scrolling perspective, I uh, picked up Rayman Origins, which was on Steam sale this week yeah. um, for pretty cheap. Um, and I, I liked so far what I played. I didn't play a whole lot of it. Um, I think it'll be kind of a fun game uh, to go to when I've maybe had a bit of a heavy workload in terms of playing video games. Now, that's a very uh, kind of strange way of, of, of saying that. But I play a bunch of gory-ass yeah. <laughs> fucking deep games and that are just like at the end of it you're just like god man I don't even want to go outside and Rayman Origins was nothing but whimsical fun uh, it was a beautiful a fucking mood. game oh my god yeah it is I like the musical aspect of it that I kind of <laughs> caught on as I was playing getting that rhythm going in I mean things look great It again looks like a Saturday morning cartoon um, I love the way the little creatures speak it's just it's so funny to go from you know like like the distraught I feel playing a game like FTL where just everything's exploding and you're fucked the whole time. You're and, fucked. and this game where I'm just like, ah, I'm feeling pretty good about this. So um, I, I don't know if it'll be a game that I'm going to like beat in terms of completion because yeah, there's does... a difficulty to it that I don't think I'm going to be able to to quite grasp. I'm not yeah. I'm not that kind of player. I'm not. There's a, a precision player. in Rayman Origins that I played that game with my wife and that got insane trying mm -hmm. to get through some of those sections 
together. Yeah. yeah. And and I could tell it's like a Donkey Kong Country in a way, in that in Donkey Kong Country the first few levels are fun, but then you get to a point where like the fun's gone. And I just I see Rayman is definitely going to be like that because it's it's for a different class of, of of gamer, and that's fine. I'm not that class. I that's cool. That's cool to me. But I, I I mean I like it for what it is, and I I think that art style and um uh musically it's 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 great. It's again it's delightful. It's a delightful little treat at the end of a blood filled <laughs> day. I think that's really depressing. Yeah, I'm depressing. really excited for Rayman Legends to come out. I think that's either end of August or early September. It's getting closer. I yep. they delayed it, but if you like the music at all in that game, the, the the music levels that they're building for Rayman Legends, the the one they have in the demo, I just the game. It's just it. It's some of the you know, it's so happy and and you need happy games in your library. Uh-huh. Yes, and, you do. Um, yeah. As you, if you, I don't know how anybody can say anything bad about Rayman. Like, no, <laughs> he's got no arms. Oh, poor guy. That's you, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I have to bring that up. Uh, man. Um, I also happened to purchase a game that uh, became more of an investment than I thought it was going to be. I got Euro Truck Simulator 2. Um, just because <laughs> when Mr. Josh Lee mm-hmm. of JoshLee.com fame talked about his experiences with Euro Truck Simulator and how it made him feel like a truck driver, and that sounded pretty great to me, and the fact that I live in Europe kind of was even more of a, a you know a carrot I want to go drive by because, my house. Well, I started in Berlin, and I mean, you can start in Berlin, and I saw the big TV tower, and uh, I, I do. I wonder if I can. Uh, well, here's the thing. I would drive by my house, but I live in an area that's not um, very truck accessible. wide. Yeah, and, and, and I, I struggle to get well, what's my the... truck onto the off-ramp, See. so I can only imagine what would happen to me if I tried to get it near my place. Because that's the rule with driving trucks, though. In video game, like, there are, you can take those trucks anywhere. Well, and I will, I will try, but man, I, I, I like how realistic it is because I forget <laughs> that about like some of these driving games that we play is, is there's an aspect of realism that's kind of taken away because it wouldn't be fun. But this one, I stopped and I went off road, and I was stuck. Like I couldn't get back <laughs> out. And I started to back up and I hit something. I was like, well, there's nothing behind me, and I and I did the the look out the window and did you? there was a there was a, like a line of cars just like like right behind me. I was like, oh god, I'm gonna have to just give this up. Um, did you but, feel the urge to wear a hat while playing this game? Uh, I did wear a hat. I did yeah. actually, in fact, wear a hat. I have a trucker hat uh, that I've just just been sitting there, and I've really had no reason to wear it except for then, and I put it on. Over, almost put on a pair of overalls, but uh, they belong <laughs> to my wife, and I, that's that's a weird thing. That's a, that's a different path that I would be walking down. Um, but I will say that Josh Lee, uh, I, I emailed Josh Lee and just said, "Hey, man, I, I got this. I got maybe maybe a show idea because you know we we are always thinking of ways to make." videos out of video games and uh, um, he just <laughs> responded with get a steering wheel and so I was like oh shit so, like, so I, I'm, I'm like you know I spent what like nine ninety nine on the game and I'll end up spending you know 60 bucks or however much uh, steering wheel peripherally uh, periphery whatever, you know what I fucking mean the steering wheel <laughs> um, how much that Fake costs steering wheel. and uh but I think it'd be fun. I think it'll be a, a whole lot I, of fun. And I'm, oh man, it, it it it's it's an interesting game. It's a sim game. I've never really got into the driving, flying sims. But this one, I don't know. I may live out a dream, and when I come back to the states, I may may have a new occupation. I think um, you should try to play this game for in eight hour shifts, and <laughs> uh, try to convince your wife that you can't. You, you just came home from a long day on the road and see how long she plays along and then see how long it takes takes you takes her to make you uninstall the game. Well, I'll, I'll, t- I'll just tell Is her that your show idea? Online, <laughs> online trucking classes, you know? Like, that's like that's what I'm doing right now. Where do you truckers stop? It's a, little bit, it's a little bit, you know, tough to convince her that I'm going to be a spaceship pilot, but uh, trucking, I don't know. You know, that's a thing. Do Europe, does Europe have, like, their own waffle houses? Like, do truckers stop at a waffle house Drink coffee, eat a bunch of pancakes. Um, you know, pancakes aren't a huge thing. They eat sandwiches for every meal. That's one thing. That's one thing that happens. Like um, a breakfast sandwich with syrup. No, <laughs> it's just a regular plain old sandwich. Um, I, 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 they do have truck stops here, which is a great thing. But um, uh, and and people drink coffee, uh, some usual things. But they just don't have the greasiness that is inherent 
to American trucker culture that I think... I mean, their truckers are pretty well-dressed, like, for the most part. Our truckers are just <laughs> gritty as hell. You know, this fight between our truckers... Fancy truckers. Their truckers. Our truckers would fuck them up. Like, I'm sorry. Sorry, Europe, but you guys would have no chance against our truckers. Our truckers are fucking tough. That's American awesome. truckers are scrappy. Yeah, they're real scrappy. Yeah, All those waffles. Shit. Yeah, they eat a lot of waffles. <laughs> Trucker Olympics. Let's make it happen. I'm filled to the brim with waffles, but I will punch you in the face. <laughs> Nothing will stop me. That's I'm American. Truck. Maybe I'm American. you shouldn't play that. You might turn into an angry individual, actually. Yeah, well, I might. I like waffles a lot, so no telling. I play American Truck Simulator. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's got, a, it's got a lot of different side games. Yeah. <laughs> you just eat waffles. You know, eat waffles. Man. Get a hand job here and there. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> the truck stops are handled completely differently. Yeah. They actually use GTA's <laughs> engine for some yeah, of it. The hot coffee engine. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else, Ethan? Um, I'm going to start streaming Call of Cthulhu. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. We, we've already discussed this. Um, I started to uh, stream it today, and you know what? I'm very happy to say that that game has uh, aged, maybe not graphically well, but mechanically. I was it was it It's a sound game. Still got a hell of a lot of atmosphere. Um, and I love H.P. Lovecraft. I, I love everything that came out of that sick, twisted man's mind. Uh, it, some great shit, and I'm looking forward to playing through that game. I really am. I'm really pumped up about it. Uh, you know, obviously, it's an aged game, so uh, not unlike Cheese, uh, there are some stenches <laughs> that aren't particularly attractive, um, but you get over it because classy people eat stinky old cheese. And now, okay, now I get that it's older. And so I'm not commenting on the actual like character models or the geometry or the yeah or anything like that. But like, why are all the like why are all the characters ugly and <laughs> they just the voice work? They just sound not so inhuman. They're just angry people. The uh, the voice work overall is yeah mediocre. But the town that you're dealing with, and I don't if this is gonna be spoilers. Let me just say this: the townsfolk themselves are not what they appear to okay. be. Okay. Uh, if I'll you uh, read the short story Shadow Over Innsmouth, uh, which is, uh, this game is based on a couple of H.P. Lovecraft stories, but that's this area that we're dealing with at this point. And, uh, yeah, those people are, there's some weird shit going on in that town, so uh, there'll be more of that. But, yeah, no, they, they're they not just a, I mean, you, at first, the, the impression you're supposed to get is it, it's a town full of the Killjacks and, like, you know, inbred people. Uh, but they're not inbred. They're actually... They've actually bred outside their comfort zone to a point that is <laughs> is diabolical. Let me just say that. Spoiler free. They the fuck darkest. fish people. Uh, <laughs> is that is that okay? It's it's enough. There's enough for that. I'll fill in the blanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that porn was to. immediately banned from the UK. <laughs> what? <laughs> but the truckers still watch it. Yeah. So they both <laughs> So you think you're going to see that through on the live stream? Um, I think so, but there's a lot of things I think I'll see through, and it doesn't always happen, yeah. so we'll just, we'll just I'll have to keep I mean, you know, I'll motivate on that. Just because I want people to, one, I think, like Eternal Darkness, that there's two games that stand out in my mind from that generation, Eternal Darkness and this game, in terms of atmosphere and in terms of just... like This is not an action game that has action elements to it, but this is strictly... A, an adventure horror type game. I think they need to revisit Mr. H.P. Lovecraft a lot more in yeah. gaming, not just as a nod to him, because basically most monsters and aliens you see in one way or another came from some of his creations. Um, but I mean, there's some great stories. Um, I think um, there was they were. I thought they were making a game uh, based on uh, um, Over the Mountains of Madness. Um, oh shit, that's not right. Through the Mountains of Madness. Whatever that is. Um, uh, Mad Mountains. Yeah, it was the Mountains of Madness. Whatever that is. It's it's My brain isn't working at this point. But um, th there's a lot of material. He's got a lot of material. He's got some material that's almost like you couldn't do anything with it just because that's how he writes. Um, but, I mean, there's a ton of potential just in that whole the mythos behind it all. I mean, you could do some cool shit with it. And this game achieved it quite well. Um, yeah, you mentioned it a long time ago. It's just one of your favorite kind of horror experiences, and 
I think it's up there on, on the classics list for a lot of people. I've never mm-hmm. really played it, but um, I think when I jumped on your stream, Aaron, you were making L.A. Noir jokes, but, like, seriously, <laughs> the, um, the amount of, like, um, what's the word? The amount of narration in the, in the game kind of surprised me, but it also sets a really cool noir-like tone, and mm-hmm. I mean, I really, I don't know, I've been thinking about that, like, what else I want to see Rockstar do, and I, I think they could they could do something really cool with, uh, like, this would be out of their out of their element quite a bit, but at the same time, I think they could pull it off if they um, if they did that kind of more detective story that that, w- that was kind of showing itself. That would be a game that I would play the absolute shit out of, like that. I mean, like a det- like a paranormal type detective. We can talk about this in pitches, um, but yeah, because I mean. That would be great, you know, investigating weird shit like that. Uh, you know, oh man, that would be really cool. You know, yeah, Rockstar should step up their game and you know make make something where you try to open doors and there's maybe fifty different lines about that door being locked. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that it, that was really impressive though. There's 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 a distinct difference between the dialogue and opening different doors. So one door he may say, ah, oh, I can't get in this. That other door he may say, nah, this door's not gonna give. Another line, maybe. <laughs> eh, I'll come back. <laughs> like just, Except um, that, I think Rockstar that... needs to stop making shitty fucking what, whatever that shitty game that's coming out, that fifth installment of that franchise that nobody yeah. cares about anymore. You know, stop focusing Never. on that shit and get to real games. Guys. Like Grand Theft Doorknob. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nope, not going to open this one. Nope. Oh, okay, I think... Uh, you got anything else, Ethan? Sorry. No, that's I lost it. My, yeah. lost no my I was nope. I was back to thinking about the how much dialogue they recorded, but they only did the one line for him not reading, wanting to read a book. Like I'm not gonna. I'm not, gonna yeah. <laughs> I'm not a pen pusher. I'm a detective. <laughs> he's like, and then in the very next scene, he's he's literally pushing a pen, and then he's <laughs> writing diaries. Like he keeps a diary after he says that. I'm just like you, fucking hypocrite. <laughs> Dear diary, I'm right. a liar. Now I'm a the... goddamn hypocrite. <laughs> <laughs> Now's the part of the show where we put a bunch of peer pressure on Aaron, Aaron to write a review and talk about the stuff that we're working on. Um, what are you doing, yes. Aaron? What are you, what are you up to? Well, I've gotten my radio waves going again, and mm-hmm. that's been kind of easy. I just I just pretty much shoot the breeze on those and talk about Animal Crossing a little bit. Those write themselves. Yeah. But... <laughs> uh, the reviews. I've played a number of games uh, that have just kind of gotten away from us, and we haven't been able to talk about them because Justin won't finish them. <laughs> so well, it's uh, pushing the, pushing it back on me. You share the blame. Um, <laughs> Last of Us. I haven't shared my opinion on that. Bioshock Infinite. But yeah, we. I don't want to write a review for those. I think we've agreed on that. We kind of. Sure. Those are more talkable, worthy things because everyone's throwing out tens and fives and thumbs up. So join us in 2014 for our opinions <laughs> on The Last of Us and Bioshock mm-hmm. Infinite. Yeah, so during our Game of the Year discussion... We, no, we, we won't be able to talk about it then. Yeah, we, those won't even be nominated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> those games won't make it. So I'll try to find some way to talk about games that... Maybe I don't want to do like a formal review, but just kind of talk about new stuff that I'm playing that people are yeah. maybe already aware of. You experimented with trying to do a game curious video offline. I know that didn't fly too well, but Try, yeah, those indie games destroyed me on trying to do my first game curious. I really wanted to show off the Swapper because I'm like that's that got a little bit of exposure. Some people were aware of that, but I'm like, oh, that'd be a good one to actually show off to the crowd here. And that game just hates open broadcaster or something because it would not stream <laughs> properly at all. Like I could get it to show up in the window with a certain setting, but it wouldn't record the animation. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, I give up. I flipped a table and everything. <laughs> and then uh, Gunpoint was the other one. That one I could kind of get to work right, but it was still so much of a hassle. And uh, Verdian tried the demo and didn't understand it. And so I was like, ah, I'll flip another table. <laughs> <laughs> And so, then I broke all the tables and then, my computer. Broke, I'm not a detective. I'm a table fixer. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'll, I'll eventually play some stuff and get some reviews up. Uh, but yes, the summertime, you think people have all the time in the world, but you become an adult and you have no time, Adults. regardless of what season it is. 
<laughs> so I'm hoping to get some kind of review out. Uh, maybe if I finish uh, Shin Megami Tensei, I'll tell the world about it. <laughs> Pick the short RPG to finish and write a review on it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'll, I'll write something. Games will come out, and then new consoles will come out. And you're... Yeah. Sounds like you're streaming this Thursday, so... Yes, Torchlight 2 Thursday. I don't know if that'll become a regular thing just because of my schedule and whoever had Thursday before me, but... Yeah. Uh, I'm hoping to play most of that game online with uh, Nilmar and others who are welcome to join. I'll stream it, say what you want, curse, be polite, I don't care. We're going <laughs> to click on things and get loot. We're going to click on things. That's a good <laughs> segment title. Um, and then you can look look for Aaron. He'll be showing up here about every other week ish on the on the, on the Night Force. Um, yes. And so that should that should keep inter- Ethan entertained. We can't keep the same people on the show, um, or else Ethan starts to dislike them and they run away from us. At least that's what I'm assuming will happen with Josh. But yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, Ethan, what are you what are you working on, buddy? Uh, so finally got the. Uh... Uh, Michael Stern's interview uh, pulled together. Um, I, I had a hell of a time with that, but we're actually it, we took it to the next level and featured it um, throughout the week. So we split that into or Justin split that into four parts, and we're featuring that throughout this week. So uh, may may not be as heavy on writing this week, but you've got that going on. Um, but the really exciting news that I'm really oh, excited yeah. about yeah. personally is we'll be at Gamescom. We, we as we in, as in a, a a a spiritual we mostly, but I I will be going to Gamescom. Um, press credentials came in, so that's a great thing. Uh, that's always a nerve wracking process because that kind of you know if, if you know if you're not recognized as a as a journalist, then it's kind of like oh, oh shit, what, what the fuck are we doing? So uh, <laughs> we are going, um, or I am going. I'm trying to assemble a uh, a team, a freelance themed team, to do some videos. Uh, worst case scenario, it will be a first-person perspective <laughs> of Gamescom from the viewpoint of Doom of colon Gamescom. I was gonna say, <laughs> um, I'm excited to go, and I have no idea what's gonna happen. Um, I, I, it's it's a huge, huge conference, biggest one in Europe, I believe, mm. and uh, hopefully some cool stuff comes out of it. Um, but it, if anything, I could just look at some real nice cosplay tits. So that's, I guess, worst case scenario. <laughs> well, I guess there's a lot you. of them there. And then you could have some uh, conversation material for for Reddit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, all they they'll love that. Yeah, that's, that's what all the photo albums have been going up in there. But but no, and really, um, actually, Gamescom is really cheap by comparison to some of the other conventions. I was really surprised. It's like thirty five euro for like a couple day pass or something, or sixty five euro for the week. So I mean, if you're in Europe and you can get down to it, I mean, definitely go. Cologne looks like a cool city. I've never been, so I'll be hanging out there. Uh, come talk to me, because uh, I'll either be with a lot of people or completely, <laughs> completely by, by myself yourself. and looking very lost. So, but I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm actually working on a lot of video stuff right now. Um, two are kind of similar. I've, I'm starting to cut together a Mega Man Unlimited Death Reel, um, kind of similar to what I did for the Psychonauts piece. And then, like I said, the for Skyrim, some sort of some sort of montage about my relationship with Lydia because she's really carrying me through that game and um pretty sure the chat audience enjoys her more than they enjoy me so uh, <laughs> she deserves her moment in the sun um uh, if you define moment in the sun by just a montage of me insulting her and killing her um but so that's that's forthcoming but that kind of actually brings up a question I wanted to pose to to you guys um as far as our style of like, we've got our daily highlights that uh, you know we we do those on a regular basis. But these kind of montage things, I'm trying to figure out what else to do with them. Um, especially since Ethan, you put together, you essentially turned a highlight clip of of your FTL run into a Brotabulous video, and trying to find a, a style of video somewhere in between what I'm doing with the highlights and just a straight up montage because those are. You're trying to find a story to tell with some of these things, so I think the Lydia piece will come out all right, but I'm not sure about the Mega Man piece. What else to do with that? Because it, I don't know. We're just watching a 90 seconds to three minutes of repetitive deaths in Mega Man may not be as entertaining as, <laughs> it, it, but it may be super entertaining. It could be. It could be. Yeah. 
I was going to say, because when Josh died uh, on Super Meat Boy again and again and again and again, uh, we could have laughed forever and ever. I just <laughs> actually still need to put that up. I, I pulled that clip a long time ago. His Dark World run, especially mm-hmm. the, I think the one level where he dies 70 times. Mm-hmm. That, <laughs> that was, was that was that was good. That was I'll, good. I will have to I'll have to dig that back up. Well, I have random Josh Lee archive moments, but oh, man. But yeah, I, so if, if anybody from chat or anybody, anybody, you guys have any ideas about potential other ways to, to do highlight reels or kind of gameplay videos, I'm definitely, there's something something else out there besides just doing a montage or an all-out brotabulous bro- piece. But So I'm exploring that a little bit. Um, and then this week, I'm actually giving a presentation at work um, about the gamification of Steam. And I'm putting together a, a not a not a PowerPoint, but an online presentation. Um, and when I get that done, I'm going to write an article on it and post it to the site. So I just thought that was nice. kind of kind of funny that um, yeah, I'm gonna put a PowerPoint up on the website. Is basically all I'm saying. Uh, but <laughs> um, aside from the you know the 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 trading cards really ca- came into their own this past week with the Steam sale. But just if you look at where Steam's community was, you know, two years ago your like personal profile um it's been a fascinating growth and they uh, you know ever since they started selling hats in team fortress 2 just steam's steam's quietly been paving the way for a while and i'm going to take kind of a, a a long look at that and uh um hopefully have a somewhat interesting uh, article or at least a humorous powerpoint presentation with funny animations and wave files buried in them but <laughs> yeah who would have imagined that Steam would go from hats and just snowball into all this other stuff that yeah. stops you from playing the games they oh, you play highly the game. entice you to buy. <laughs> I mean, the platform itself is now a game. It was just kind of it was kind of yeah. that that moment of like, what is what has happened? It's like the the fucking Lego movie, the video game that's coming out. <laughs> like <laughs> things are just like becoming themselves. It's very Cats very are odd. Dogs. Yeah. <laughs> so. all right um game pitches uh chat if you've got uh anything you want to see us tangent off of and try to make a game off of um we had a few ideas pop up earlier in the show um and i think we should start off with revisiting what we want rockstar to do with the cthulhu games um you seem like you had a little bit of a bigger idea there maybe ethan yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, uh, I didn't play L.A. Noir, but I kind of get the impression of what it was. Um, you can maybe combine something like that with maybe your Red Dead Redemption, uh, looking at the time period between those two games is the time period you want, and having an open world, but instead of just kind of focusing on shooting and stuff, kind of the more investigation side of things, putting clues together. Um, I kind of got to take reference from Secret World a little bit mm-hmm. with how there were some puzzles in, incorporated into that game um, that kind of required some real-world knowledge and some actually in-game knowledge. Now, this game, you'd want more in-game knowledge, but if you stuck within the uh, the mythos of um, uh, H.P. Lovecraft stuff, uh, no, having that knowledge would help as well. But I just imagine just... I love that. I mean, that time period's great because like that, that was before humans had, you know you know, extremely accurate machine guns and jets and all that kind of stuff. I mean, we were getting there, but we still, there was kind of an inherent extremely weakness. Extremely we accurate jets. Yeah, extreme, <laughs> extremely accurate jets. Um, but I think I, I think it'd be really cool and just not be just a, you know, brainless shooter, but it could be something a little bit more than that. I think that's, like, kind of the initial appeal of L.A. Noire was that it, you know, wasn't taking place modern day. It was a little mm-hmm. bit, and and I think I think you nailed it, that, that that's what I want to see Rockstar do, tackle another another period in time and um they're just so good with their narrative and they but they they only focus it on you know um crimes crime related stories and i'd like to see what they could do with something a little bit more fantastical but also you know keep a you know a little bit of a serious tone to it so yeah um I, yeah i mean just when aaron when you said it, that that game looked like an early la noir that's it was just really sticking with me but mm-hmm. yeah what the hell are you writing, Aaron? We're, tell me, <laughs> tell me what's going on here. I just went balls to the wall deep 
on uh, this game pitch, but it's an amalgamation of everything we've talked about <laughs> <laughs> in the last couple of hours. But I'm thinking maybe a game that's it's like a meta game, kind of like the Steam trading cards. But instead of that, you're collecting trucks and waffles, and you travel around Europe, but then you go into space. And that's where things just like once you have enough trucks and waffles to power yourself, you go up into space and you just you start fighting people. Are you talking about a waffle powered truck space shuttle? I am. I'm talking about a waffle powered truck space shuttle. I was thinking he was thinking about a truck powered waffle. That's no, you're wrong. <laughs> you gotta get the order right. <laughs> yeah. I, guess, I mean, I so, guess if you put enough trucks behind the waffle iron, you could probably propel yourself into space. Feel that shit right to space. Yeah. What so, happens in space? Anything your heart desires. I was going to say, what space. doesn't happen in space? <laughs> You've got trucks and waffles, and you just turn that into energy, and you just go hog wild um, amongst the stars. But the joy of this is, it's like that zombie <gasps> game that people play on, you know, college campuses. Everyone's playing like the zombie stuff, but this is like real. You you've got your trucks, your waffle energy. You're in space, and then all of a sudden, it's it's funded by the people that made Taken. Of course, the producers of Taken helped make this a reality. <laughs> And the president's daughter is there, Maggie Grace. Yeah, you know, she's up in there too. You got a protector, but everyone's just fighting each other. It's, it's like I'm, Cube World with trucks and waffles. I'm pretty sure you just <laughs> made the prequel to StarCraft. <laughs> this is what leads to the, the creation of the Zerg. The the Americans who go up are just you know they're grimy and they're just ready to kill, and I mean, they eventually worth... evolve into the Zerg. Yeah. <laughs> I think the space truckers have to come from somewhere. Oh, in short, this is just Cube World mode trucks and waffles. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the two things missing from Cube World right now. Well, that's, space and waffles. That's absolutely true. They have pancakes, though. There's pancakes. I didn't see any waffles. I, I did find some pancakes. Uh, I think if you give them to a monkey, the monkey joins you. <laughs> I don't remember, though. I don't remember all the details on that. And you, you go know, you space. Throw, you throw trucks and uh, waffles into any game, uh, you're gonna get some. You're gonna get some eyes open. You know, you're gonna get some people <laughs> knocking on your door saying, "Excuse me, this sounds like a delightful game." Um, the chaos of space is is always a backdrop that we can always fall back on. But I just imagine how chaotic it gets when waffles are on the line. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. there's a reason. There's a reason that waffles haven't been introduced in games very <laughs> often, and that's because of they're 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 uncontrollable. It's just like take your most favorite storyline, introduce waffles to them, and you lose it. Like you, it's just no longer like Last of Us. Like you know, Joel and Ellie will be slitting each other's throats for those waffles. Like no one, no one can. You can't contain the absolute power and majesty, if you will, of waffles. I'm so fucking hungry right now. <laughs> I haven't had a waffle for so long. Oh my gosh. Just bratwurst, beer, coffee, and bratwurst and beer, coffee. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's it. <laughs> I I dip my bratwurst into my beer, coffee, and that's what we have every morning, every oh, single man. day. World War Three would launch off if Germany had those waffles. <gasps> I'd love some waffles, and Belgium is so close to me. Like I don't know why I don't even just take a trip down there and get some. Uh, don't they just like have them on the border, just waiting for you? <laughs> they have these big plates full of them. There's big they trucks. Just, they make on them the border. And... And they open the doors of the trucks, and they just shoot waffles. Yeah, I was gonna say, there. is is there is there an IHOP? It's international. I, I haven't seen one. I, is it? That's what oh, the first. That's what the eyes did. <laughs> that's what the eyes I thought it was interplanetary uh, house of pancakes. That's what I was. Interplanetary. It's the IHOP. They would have to change I, their branding at all. House of waffles. <laughs> yeah, intergalactic house of pancakes. Intergalactic house of waffles. <laughs> <laughs> I was I hoping wanna... for like a, a minute straight of Ethan laughing. Oh, I probably could just this, <laughs> time, just this the uh, the passion in your voice behind this this waffle truck, you know, mashup is just is is what really gets waffle me. Truck and space waffle truck and space waffle uh. trucks. Boop boop. <laughs> <laughs> we don't even need to hire movie voice over guy. We can just use nope. that line. <laughs> Aaron McNeil presents. <laughs> I, I want the voice actor Ooh, from Cthulhu in my game, though. Yeah, he should be in every, every game. <laughs> How are we going to get all these waffles into space? <laughs> Can't open this door. Too many we, waffles we, we, behind it. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, all of the waffles are are gone. It must have been the, the waffles. The space fish people. <laughs> we can tie this back into Cthulhu, I think, if we if we keep heading down this path. Cthulhu so all into anything. Yeah. yeah. Um, we talked a little bit about demons and the Winchesters earlier, but how about an exorcist game? Like where you Ooh. actually you take the that whole investigation engine from L.A. Noir. I don't know why we're talking about L.A. Noir so much this episode, um, <laughs> but but it just it was kind of intrigued me that you kind of have that moment where you're you can either save or kill this demon and just the repercussions of of those acts. So basically, L.A. Noir meets supernatural uh, meets an exorcist game. Do you negotiate with these demons? Do they? I think want it's money? up to you. I don't think you should, <laughs> but. Um, some bad shit can happen if you do, because maybe these are you know they're low level demons, and you really just you just want to get these guys off the street and get to the <laughs> get to the the big the big dogs, get to the get, get them off the streets, the demon get them knights, into the and, yeah, get to Abaddon, you know, you don't care about low level demon. Mm-hmm. Trade um, up some trucks and waffles. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, maybe you make a deal with the devil, and that's what you get. Waffles? Waffles? <laughs> a, a, space, a space truck full of waffles, and then after that, you've, you're you like the the first generation of a family who's, who's forever cursed by the greedy-ass fucking great-great-grandpa who just fucking couldn't get his fill of waffles, and now you're fighting demons for that. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was so much logic, I couldn't follow it. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I think we need to go have some waffles. I think that's, yeah. that's it for... For Night Force tonight. Breakfast thanks for force. um thanks for putting up with us, Chad. <laughs> yeah. We appreciate um, it. Make yourself you, some waffles. You deserve it. Yeah, you yeah absolutely. If what that's the only way to end the end the evening. So um we will be back with another episode next week. I think Jason will be joining us. Um jet lag from his trip through Arkansas. Um and we'll catch you with uh more live streaming on Horrible Night. Real soon. Yes.